The stock market is one of the most accessible wealth building tools that you can access. But lots of people never actually end up making money or building wealth in the stock market. There are essentially two ways that you can invest in the stock market. You have the cool way. Oh yeah. And then you have the boring but profitable way. Oh yeah. When most people invest in the stock market, they're trying to find the next Amazon or Tesla. They're trying to be cool. It's the cool way to invest because you want to find the next hot stock and buy it before it gets big. You can make a lot of money doing that, but it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of research and most people don't actually put in the work to do it. They're just gambling. And there's a lot of people, especially when you first enter the stock market, they get really allured by this idea of being able to flip a stock very quickly for a huge profit. Like you see this penny stock trading at four cents a share and you think, whoa, what if I buy a thousand dollars worth of this stock and it goes up to eight cents a share? That's not that big of a jump. If that happens, I'm going to make a thousand dollars. And if the stock goes up to a dollar, I'm going to have $25,000 doing nothing. And the next thing you know, your money has gone because that stock went out of business. Trust me, I know I've been there. Even if you're too smart for penny stocks and you're investing in well-established companies, chances are you felt the pain of investing in a company and then you see your stock go down. I mean, that's why so many people are searching. Why do stocks go down when I buy them on Google? So now you have a lot of people that are investing in companies and losing money. And then you also have this big group of people that are scared to invest in stocks because they see all these people lose their money. But there is another way that you can invest in stocks that doesn't have as much risk where you don't have to try to find the perfect company where you can build sustainable wealth. The downfall with this is, is kind of boring. It's not as cool as trying to find the next Amazon. So what is the secret system? Index funds. Index funds, not to be confused with index fingers or index cards, are a simpler but boring way for you to invest in stocks and build profit over the long term while compounding your wealth. That's why in this video, I'm going to be going over over index funds and more specifically Vanguard index funds and you'll see what I mean in just a minute but before I get into that I need you to do me a quick favor and smash that thumbs up button below because the way the YouTube algorithm works if you do not smash that thumbs up button then YouTube is much less likely to show you and other people our financial news and education videos. An index is a group of stocks, is a segment, and a fund is something that you can invest in. So as a simple example, let's say you really like tech companies, but you don't know how to find the best tech stock. So let's create a tech index fund. So remember, an index is a group of stocks, and in this, we're gonna create one right now. Let's put in Amazon, A-M-Z, and these are the ticker symbols, Facebook, Google, what's another tech stock? Apple, A-A-P-L. So now we have just created an index, which is a group of stocks. Now, if you want to invest in this group of stocks and you don't want to individually invest in all these companies, you can invest into this fund. So now this has just become a fund. This fund invests in these individual stocks and you can buy shares of this fund. Now you're not going to be the person that's actually creating the fund because there's a lot of complexities into that and they get a lot bigger than this. I'm just showing you kind of as an example of what an index is, but you as an investor can invest into a fund which invests in a bunch of stocks. That way you don't have to try to find the best company to invest in. The reason passively managed index funds have become so popular is because back in the day, the only way that you could invest in funds was by investing in what's called actively managed funds. Here's the thing, someone or something has to manage this index of stocks because if Facebook goes out of business because people don't want Facebook anymore and people stop buying Apple iPhones, then what's gonna happen to this fund? You're gonna have only some stocks that are doing well and all these stocks that are going bankrupt. And if that's the case, your investment is gonna tank. So someone or something is gonna have to actually manage this fund to make sure that the stocks in here are doing well. And you're not gonna be the one doing that because the whole point of investing in this fund is so that you don't have to do all the work. In actively managed funds, what would happen is you would have this person right here manage this index. So let's draw a nice mustache on this person. And this person probably went to Yale for undergrad and they went to Wharton for business school for their MBA. And to most people, that means they're probably very smart. Now to me, I'm sure they're very smart, but what that means to me is they're probably going to charge you a whole lot of money. And that's exactly what these money managers did. So they would create this fund and then they would charge you a whole lot of money. So this is you, the investor, and a lot of your money would go right into this person with a mustache's pocket. 
So if you wanted to invest in stocks, but you didn't want to put in the time and effort to research companies and to manage your stocks, then what you would do is you would hand over your money to this money manager with a mustache who went to Yale, who went to Wharton, who is now going to charge you a whole lot of money to take your money and put it into this index or fund that they are managing. And if your index, your investment goes down, they're still going to charge you a lot of money. This model is why index funds, as we know them today, were created. Now, I have nothing against mustaches, but I really like the idea idea of people being able to invest their money without paying all their money in fees. The way it worked is, instead of having this guy with a mustache manage your money, how about, and let me erase the mustache and the person, how about we just have a computer manage your investments because computers are a whole lot cheaper to manage and we can just tell the computer, hey, why don't we just create this investment where this thing, this fund invests in the top 10 tech companies. And now if Facebook goes bankrupt, this computer can automatically kick Facebook out and put in a new company. So this was automation coming into the money management and investment game because now instead of paying an expensive money manager, people can create an algorithm of what type of companies they want to invest in. And so if you want to invest in the top 10 tech companies and one company goes below that threshold, this computer will automatically kick this company out of the fund and bring in a new company. Like if Facebook goes out, maybe Snapchat will come in. This computer will automatically calculate that and make these transactions that way your fund has the stocks that you have in the algorithm. Two things happen when you do this. First, you as the investor, you get to save a whole lot of money because managing a computer is a whole lot cheaper than paying a money manager who went to Yale and who went to Wharton to manage your money. And second, you get to take the emotion out of investing. The reason so many people, including high paid money managers, lose money in the market is because people are emotional beings. When the 2020 pandemic hit and the stock market crashed, do you wanna know what a lot of expensive money managers did? They sold. They were selling stocks out of their fund out of fear. If your fund manager makes bad trades and you lose money, you lose money in your investment, but you also have to keep paying your money manager. Look, there's a time and a place for actively managed funds, but if you really wanna get the good money managers, you need a lot of money to invest with them. So now we're talking millions of dollars. If you don't have millions of dollars to invest, chances are you're not gonna get access to the greatest money managers. Passively managed funds let you invest your money into stocks while paying low fees, and a lot of times these passively managed funds will get you better returns than actively managed funds and you get to pay way less in fees. But in order for index funds to build you wealth and really make you money, you have to invest in them the right way because this isn't one of those things where you can just invest in an index fund on Monday and expect to be rich by Wednesday. If you enjoyed this clip and you want to continue your financial education journey, I have another video that I think you'll love. All you got to do is click that button right over there. And for those of you who want to stay up to date on the top finance and business news, you can join Market Briefs, my free financial newsletter, by clicking that button below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.